Hey folks, welcome back to the woods. Slightly different episode this time. I've got my backpack with me and inside I have five items. I'm gonna spend the next 24 hours out here in the woods, gonna sleep overnight and try and use those five items to make life as comfortable as possible. Before I do, I wanna give a quick shout out to NordVPN for sponsoring this episode. They have an exclusive deal for you over at nordvpn.com forward slash TA Outdoors, but we'll talk about that in a bit. We're after lunchtime. It's winter, dark at 4 p.m. I've got a few hours I need to get set up with a shelter. So without further ado, let me run you through the gear and then let's go and get some shelter. All my kit is in this bag. The backpack does not count as one of the items for the 24 hours. It's just something I've used to carry the items into the woods. First up is shelter. So on the bottom of my bag here, I have a wool blanket. No ordinary wool blanket though, this does have an oil skin side which is pretty much waterproof so this is going to act as my shelter from below to help me stay warm I can wrap it over me or i can make some sort of tarp shelter i'm not sure yet and it can protect me from above from rainfall as well so shelter a knife this is the only tool i have with me today 10 centimeter billy can for a cook pot my meals ready to eat my military rations, Spanish rations. We've got a lunch one and a breakfast one. That's it. A fire steel. And then on the back, which I showed in a recent video, just some paracord, which is tied here onto the D-loop, the carrying loop of my backpack. That's it. So as I'm gonna get the questions, let me just quickly mention what I have got in the pack, but doesn't count towards the five item challenge. This is my camera bag. I need something to house my camera, the batteries, a camera light. That's all in here. There's nothing file IT or secrety in there. It's just all camera gear. I need that so I can produce this video for you guys. A first aid kit, not counting that towards my five items. It's something I have on me all the time when I'm coming out into the woods, when I'm making films. So that doesn't count. A head torch because lighting for the filming, again, it goes with the camera lights. If they run out, I've got a head torch. And finally, because there's no water supply that i know within this area for quite a way some water that's the main things now i've got another one of these just here just to show you two liters that's all i've got for the 24 hours should be enough if i was in an area where i know there's fresh water nearby flowing rivers a lake something like that i wouldn't need to bring the water So because I've only got limited resources with me, no axe and no saw, I've, I'm not really gonna go full natural bushcraft shelter because I've already got a wool blanket which acts as half a shelter as well. It's a really windy day, so apologies for that in the microphone, but I'm basically looking for something natural that I can use to act as half my shelter in the first place. It just saves me half the work given that I'm on limited time till it's dark. I just got, I'm looking up because I've gotta be careful of any dead trees and <laughs> that might fall on me in the night. This tree is hung up here. The wool blanket material is fairly big, but I need this, this branch to come down. It's snapped off near the tip. The tip. So if I could just get this down, like that, now I can work on getting a bit of a shelter, or half a shelter made.
So the paracord I've stored on here, I did it in what's called a cobra weave fashion, and it just means you can store tons of paracord in a really small space. This is actually a few meters of paracord. If you want to see how to do this, just go and watch my previous video. I'll link it in the description below. Yeah, it'll be in the playlist below. It's really useful, and now I'm going to actually use it. Just unravel it now. It's called a cobra weave because it's got this snake-like pattern. Cue the fast motion. Bug, go away. So I've got my wall blanket pretty much set up. All I need to do now, so I'm gonna lie on that section there, which is the wall side, obviously. And this is the oil skin side, so when it rains, it should just run off there. I just gotta basically get figure out a way of keeping this up. So I've just snapped this stick off to get an idea of height. And this just gives me a bit of headroom in the shelter and allows any rain to run off when it does rain. This is probably about right. I can always lower this down the line. My friend Tim, he makes these and they're really, really heavy duty. They are quite weighty but they, you know, they, they last. This one's been used and abused, but he's put eyelets in the corners and he's got pop like rivets as well. So you can pop yourself in and make it like a sleeping bag, which I'm not doing in this episode, but yeah, I just need to use the eyelets to my advantage. Here's the knife. I'll just point this. I don't need it sharp. So that's how I've made the point. Just so it can, enough to fit in the eyelet and I've not pointed it too sharp, I just squared that off. So there's the eyelet, you can see it's pretty well used. It's a little bit rusty actually. And that just fits through there. I don't need loads of it poking through, only that much. If I have too much through here, it's just gonna snap. So that's perfect. And now I can lift and move this all around and it's not gonna wear away the wall blanket. Before I place it in the ground and tie it off, I need to find a stick pretty much exactly this height. It's a, bit, a little bit wavy, but we'll get there. So because I don't have a saw, and I don't want to just lean this up against the tree and snap it, because it might snap up here or it might snap down there, and it's going to be the wrong length. What I need to do, there's the mark, is I just need to go around this, scoring from this side first, just removing some material and I'll come around this side and do the same meeting in the middle and I don't have an axe and I don't have a saw now now that I've moved quite a bit of material I'm just coming around the side a bit more okay now I can step on it and it should break right there there we go tidy it up now. So I've just made two stakes, like tent pegs really, just with the knife, because I don't have a saw. Cut off there, beveled off that end there, because that can be hit in with a stake. That's the hook that's gonna keep in the paracord when I tie it, and obviously a stake at one end. Got two of these for the two corner posts. So I'm gonna show you all the knots that I do. It's two knots really that I'm gonna do to tie this out. So you make a little overhand knot there. This is just an arbor knot I'm gonna make. Tie that tight, and then further up here, just going to make another overhand knot, but this time I'm just going to leave it loose like that. Here is my arbor knot ready to tie. Underneath here I'm just going to tuck the arbor knot round so you can see it. And then wrap this paracord through here. It's quite a lot of it, so pull it. And then pull that tight, not too tight, but about there. And then slide it up near the top where I want it cinch it down and you should see it slip and the other knot will start to slip against it every time I pull and it's like a stopper knot there we go now that's really tight that's not going anywhere coming I'm coming 45 degrees out from the shelter so from 
if it, imagine this corner where it where it comes out this way. I'm just following the line of that corner. That's to, to, to try and get the, t the uh, blanket as tight as possible. But it's not going to be like a tarp because it's heavy duty material. So there will be some sag there. So now I can let go. Let that fall down again. Get my stake in. I'm actually going to shorten this stake. But now I'm going to wrap this cord around the stake there. Take up a little bit of tension. Here's my loose end. I'm going to wrap it under twice in the gap and then over the top here, all of it. And I'm not going to do a quick release loop because I need the extra cord and then pull that tight. And this is now adjustable. This is an adjustable guy line hitch. Look, I can pull it tight here, slide the knot and it still pinches. I can slide it down there and it loosens the loop. So loose, no hands, then pull it tight, slide the knot, pulls tight, and it stays there. So I accidentally stood on my other stick and snapped it, just quickly whipped up a new one, and we'll use this. I've just propped a stick up in the middle, like I say, it's going to sag a lot because it's a heavy material. It's thick when it gets wet. It just can never pull tight like a lightweight sil nylon tarp would. But it's shelter. And I've got the backdrop, I've used the backdrop of the log where the wind's coming from to protect me from the wind that side. So now I can have a fire out of the front of the shelter. So now I need to think about fire and there's a few silver birch here, some big ones and this is what I'm looking for, birch bark. Should be nice and dry even though it's been raining tons this, this week and I know it's dead because here's a, a polypore fungus growing on it. This also would be useful in a tea. I've done videos of making a plaster with it. It's got anti, believe it or not, anti-fungal properties and it just helps on superficial wood cuts and grazes as a, a makeshift plaster. Really awesome stuff. You can also use it as a knife strop. I've done videos on that too. Yeah, there you go. I need lots of this. That's a good bit. They're actually, they're really bitter in a tea. Very good health benefits from them, but they're very bitter. Oh, the stick broke. But if I can, if there's any sweeteners in that MRE, that Spanish MRE, then this will be, it'll be ideal to, to sweeten this. And this is a nice fresh one, so. And um, yeah, I can just make some tea out of this. This would be this would be nice. That's a really nice little polypore. I showed this in a video before, but essentially this is the, the part where you would strop your knife. It used, it's, it's formerly known, it used to be called the razor strop fungus, and you could use that layer, usually when hardened, not when it's soft like this, but when you dry it, it acts like a leather strop, really. It's a bit hard to do with my hands coming in from behind the camera. But yeah, once it's hardened and you let it dry out, you can use this as a strop for your knife. So my shelter is up, I've got my firewood prepped and ready. I've got my polypore fungus ready to make a tea. Hopefully there's some sort of sweetener here in the rations. But before I cook the rations, let's just say a quick thank you to our sponsor. NordVPN is a virtual private network, which encrypts your data and protects your online privacy by hiding your IP address. Here's how it works. The knife is me. The stick is me browsing the internet. This could be a public cafe on a public network. The pine needles 
are a hacker. At the moment, they can access my IP address and location, use malicious software and steal my data. However, if I turn NordVPN on, the Birch Polyphor fungus, this then encrypts my data, hides my IP address, and the hacker is then not able to access it and find out my location because I'm on a different virtual private network in a totally different country. And I can turn this on and off with the flick of a switch. You know, with so much of our data being shared these days, my online privacy is more important than ever. And if there's any steps I can take to try and protect that, then I will take them. With over 5,600 servers in 59 different countries, you can find a server near you for the faster browsing. And if like me, you enjoy binge watching Netflix or Amazon Prime, but you're not able to access a series because of the country and location that you're in, you can use NordVPN to access a server in a faraway location and then enjoy the series and the movies that you want to watch. And so thanks to NordVPN for sponsoring this episode. If you head to nordvpn.com forward slash TA Outdoors, you can get an exclusive deal today. There's a link in the description below. So these are the rations I'm using. Fuerzas Amardas. I know it's Spanish because there's a Spanish flag. Armed forces. Individual combat ration. Lunch. Comida. So it's got English on there, which is, which is obviously quite handy for me. <laughs> the expiry date of the lunch is October next year but I think on the breakfast one I've got, it expired last year sometime. I'm glad it's for breakfast anyway. Oh, that's greasy. So, something has either leaked or it's got sweaty somehow because it's really sticky. But that's the menu. Oh, it's stuck together, oh no. Ministry of Defense. Chicken pasta sauce. Vitamin C, vitamin C, vitamin C, that's for the drinks. Creamer for the milk, for the tea. Not in English, don't know what that is. Alcohol wipe, hex tablets there, matches, sardines, can't miss that one, sardinas. And this is the main lunch, no idea what's in it. Ah, oh, this looks like the stove. It has been a long time since I've used one of these little folding stoves. I think you do these big ones as the kind of legs, and then these smaller ones fold up. This is, I'm, I'm not sure this is right, I think this, this is how I used to do it done it in the past like that and then yeah and then the tin I still don't know what's in this I guess I've got to look at the menu that would make sense right so I don't actually need a campfire I didn't realize that with the MRE box for the Spanish one that there would be the uh, flammable tablets in there it's a bonus but I'm gonna have a campfire anyway because I want to keep warm tonight it's menu number four for those of you who are into your MREs. Chicken and pasta. There we go. That's all I need to read. Here's the issue guys. The sardines are so oily. I'm definitely not going to heat them up on the stove but they're so oily that it's it's come out of the tin where it's dented. There's actually a little dent there so the box got damaged and this is why the menu is covered in sardine oil and it stinks. But being oil that menu will be really flammable now. And if I was struggling to get fire going and it was really raining, which I still might do, that's going to be useful. Just like that, so it can breathe a bit. Ah, the old MRE matches. We all know how fun they are. Some of them are, some of the good, the British ones are pretty naff. Mr. Woodlouse, you're in the way. Combustible, eh? Combustible tablets. There we go. It's on. It's lit. The tablet is burning. I'm guessing I've just cracked the tin. Just gonna leave it like that. Need to read the instructions of how long to cook it. <laughs> we have smoke, so something's cooking. The sensible thing would be to peel this back first a bit more and then fold it down so that we can access it and eat it still we have bubbles so I've got vitamin C powder and that much water in one of the bottles it's just solidified <laughs> that really doesn't look appetising I know it's dissolving That, my friends, doesn't look appetizing. Unless you're Bear Grylls. I 
I'd say that's one of the weaker tasting vitamin C drinks out of the MREs I've had so far from other countries. But it's all uh, good vitamin C at the end of the day. It's so windy, guys. I'm really sorry if the camera's just roaring all the time. And there's a really squeaky tree just above me. I don't have a spoon as one of my items as well, so I need to quickly uh, whittle some sort of spoon up. Whittles a very crude fork from a piece of beach, green beach, so it doesn't have much bacteria compared to being dead. Just trying to stir it a bit. Probably should have taken the whole lid off, cooked it open I reckon. Ooh, that's piping hot. So that is beans, not pasta. I thought it was pasta. And that is sausage, not chicken. No, no, it's chicken. Uh, what? Is that chicken or sausage? It looks like a sausage. Be a chicken sausage, I reckon. <laughs> I dropped it. Chicken in the face. Still quite warm. Mm. Can't say that's the nicest MRE I've had. Five or a four out of ten compared to other ones I've had. US, Brit British, military. What other MREs should I get, guys? What other countries? I think I've done US, British, uh, can't remember what else I've done now. Do you guys recommend any really good ones? Let me know in the comments below. This is my only food for tonight. This and the sardines. Temperatures are dropping down to about uh, eight degrees, I think, Celsius tonight, which is why I've just gone with the open wall blanket and I've got lots of clothing layers on. That's where the warmth comes in and if it's not raining I'm just going to fold the blanket down over me totally so it, it completely covers me like a blanket should do it doesn't look best appetizing does it folks but you know what it will be all right for an overnight in the woods I'm making use of the early flame. Normally I wouldn't like I wouldn't cook on this fire because it's there's so much flame I'd cook on the the coals a bit more. But if you're boiling water, think of it like your gas stove at home, your gas hob, there's uh, there's lots of early flame and you can utilize that heat by just putting a, putting your billy can on a stick. Put, rather than putting it straight on the fire and putting it out, you just put it on a stick. And then that utilizes all that heat, early early flame heat. I'm still going to boil water. And then I'm going to use some of the birch polypore for a tea. It's going to be really bitter because there's no sweetener in that. I thought there'd be sugar or some sort of sweetener in the MRE, but we'll go for it anyway. It'll taste bitter, but it'll still be really good, you know, good for you sort of thing. Or good for me. So guys, I know the uh, lighting's really poor. <clears throat> My camera light, for some reason, is not going above 30%, which is a bit annoying. But just as bitter as I thought it would be. But good for you. Like I say, you could dry these. I usually dry the polypore out and do it that way, and then add honey to sweeten it. That squeaky tree is going to annoy me all night. Um, I'm just going to chill by the fire for a few hours, really. There's not too much more to film here in the, in the night time now. I've kind of done what I needed to, got the shelter up, 
got the fire going, cooked the MRE, to case you're just enjoying it by the fire now, it's getting dark early now in the winter so it's uh, yeah, just making the most of those daylight hours while, I, you, while you have them. Well it's 9 o'clock now, the squeaky tree is still going, wind's still there, that's going to be really annoying that tree I can tell. Not the sort of sound that will lull me off to sleep. The fire's still smouldering away, I'm just chucking the old stick on there. Obviously I don't have a saw or an axe, so firewood wise I'm just snapping up fairly up that, that big a diameter. It's about as big as I can snap. I can go bigger but it just, yeah, it ends up being a massive long piece. So just me snapping up about that, so I'm having to feed it really often. Um, in terms of layers, <clears throat> I've got a lot of layers on. So I've got a merino wall base layer, long sleeve thermal layer, uh, another long sleeve, just regular cotton top over the top of that, then this hoodie, and then this jacket. And I've got a, a woolly hat as well, because I don't want to get cold at night. Um, but yeah, I'm sleeping fully clothed, obviously. If it does get cold, I'm going to fold down this blanket and... Uh, yeah, just, just fold it down and keep warm in it that way because I don't think it's due to rain. I just heard some leaf rustling, it's that time of year where you just hear things. Anyway folks, I'm going to call it a night, I'm not going to waffle on all night. Call it a night, hopefully get some sleep if the squeaky tree doesn't keep going. Catch you in the morning. I actually um, kicked out the guy ropes and the posts and the middle post and just brought the blanket down just over the top of me and then this morning as I turned the camera on I've just propped it back up but I'm gonna get a quick fire going and uh, cook up the rest of the breakfast MRE which is out of date nice to be back in the woods though camping haven't done a camping episode for a long time, folks. So it is good. Finally, not greasy. Cacao on polvo. Oh, we've got another stove, although I've just lit a fire. Dried fruit, I'm guessing. Cereals, dry cereal. Uh, more chewing gum. Oh, a toothbrush. That's handy for breakfast. More MRE matches. Condensed milk, I'm guessing. Condenser. Creamer. Biscuit, chocolate. Yes, please. Oh, look at that. Loads of biscuits for a dippy tea. Tostada. Ah, oh, it's like a cereal muesli type thing. Um, to be honest, it's nice enough dry. Looks decent. Don't care if that's out of date. I like that they give you a toothbrush and toothpaste. It's quite a nice touch. Um, I haven't seen that much before at the moment. The breakfast is quite simple. There's no big, like, warm, warm meal in this one. Like you can get in some MRE breakfasts, you know, like full English breakfast and things like that. There's none of that. There seems to be a distinct lack of tea. And I know that's really British of me, but I haven't seen any tea bags yet in this Spanish one. Here's the hot chocolate. With not loads of water, because I'm running out. I'm super pleased with the wall blanket, it performed like I expected it to. 
the oil skin just shed the rain last night. It's now really heavy, but um, I'll link to this in the description to my friend Tim. Um, it's basically a wool blanket on steroids, but it's heavy duty, uh, but it's worth it, you know, for colder months like this and where it's got these rivets and pop, pop rivets, it can act as a sleeping bag as well. So it's really versatile, I like it. I tend to use it in the winter months where I'm not doing massive hikes. And uh, yeah, very pleased, let's pack it up. Well, I'm all packed up. Hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Something a little bit different. Look, it's not a full on survival challenge. I had some MREs, I had some food with me. Uh, it was just a nice minimal gear uh, camping trip. I really enjoyed it. Thankfully, the weather wasn't too bad. We did get a fair bit of rain in the night, but it was just more for a prolonged period rather than really heavy. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you for watching this far. If you already have, I do appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to hit the subscribe button. There's plenty of this type of content on my channel and there's more to come. And also thanks to our sponsor, NordVPN. Don't forget to head to nordvpn.com forward slash TA Outdoors to get your exclusive deal there. I do really appreciate you guys watching and I will catch you in the next episode.